Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. Let us know in the chat where you are tuning in from. We're super excited to be here. Before we get started, just wanted to remind everyone that we have a bunch of new set of challenges this week, every day, every weekday. Um, starting with right after the stream, we have um, XD Daily Creative Challenge with Andrea Epi. So today I'm so, so, so excited to be here with Aoife. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to you, Aoife. Let us know a little bit about you, where you're from, where you're tuning in from and designing from, um, and a little bit about your work. So I'll pass it off to you. Um, everyone, I am Julie Sandusky, and I will be your host today. Go ahead, Aoife. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, Aoife Dwyer. Uh, here's my my face here. Uh, I made a few slides just to keep me on track in terms of introducing who I am and what I'm about. So yeah, I'm, I'm based in Ireland, so I'm quite late here now. It's just gone 8 p.m. Um, and I am a creative director. I work with an agency called Each Another, who are based in Dublin, but I work full-time remotely, so I'm based in Limerick, so it's about like two hours away. Um, I do. I did like visiting the office. I was just chatting to Julie about this. It was nice. Uh, every month or so, I was getting back to the office. So hopefully, we can do that again sometime soon. But for now, I am in my lovely home office in County Limerick. You've so, got all the remote tips, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, my journey to design wasn't exactly linear, so I went through a few other bits on my way here. Um, I did biochemistry initially, and then I studied fine art. And then I eventually kind of came to design and, you know, like doing a bit of illustration and curation. I've also hosted some events, um, which obviously have been on hiatus. I used to do them in the real world. 300 people in a room uh, hasn't been a thing for a little while, uh, but maybe one day again soon. Um, and then also it's widely known to those who know me that I am an avid animated GIF enthusiast. Um, I've been working for about 10 years in design now. And I've primarily been working in the agencies, so that means I've gotten a chance to work on tons of different stuff. Um, most of my work is very much digital, so uh, I'm a UX and UI designer. A lot of my work is websites, apps, software, that kind of thing. Uh, so here's a little smorgasbord of some of the stuff I've worked on in the last few years. Um, but yeah, like some other stuff that's important to me, like in terms of introducing me, um, is this little manifesto. I thought this would be a good, a good thing maybe to introduce kind of how I approach things. Um, this is fairly recent. So I was having to think about, oh, what, what's important to me in terms of design leadership. It was a, a project that I did as part of like a, a design management diploma course. And it was a really fun one to put together because you, know, you have, kind of have these ideas about how you feel about certain things but you never really put them down in one place. So this was a really good exercise for me to kind of put it all together. Um, and I wanted to just hone in on a couple of quick points here just to, as by way of introduction, I guess. So I'm not going to read all of this, but it's, these are the things I believe in. So in terms of this idea of, you know, diverse perspectives being vital to creativity and that inclusion means all voices feel safe to be heard. Um, this idea of safety is important to me. So this is a definition, like my definition of inclusive leadership, which is that it's about making sure everyone feels seen, heard, valued, safe and empowered to speak and contribute. So creating a culture of psychological safety is paramount to this, to ensure interactions feel safe and equitable for everyone. So I think this is important because there's a lot of talk about like the importance of like diverse teams um, and inclusion. Um, and it's great having loads of, you know, interesting perspectives in a room or on a team, but if those people don't feel safe enough to contribute their, you know, perspectives and their opinions on things, then you're not like, what's the point? Uh, so this is a big important one for me. And then this one, so this, this, <laughs> This attached is to the uh, value of uh, be on cool. Uh, and if anybody is just popping in to like get a sense of what the vibes are going to be like for the next couple of hours, this is 
this is your your sense check. This is the vibe check. I have zero chill, um, and I fully believe in like being unashamedly excited, enthusiastic, and giddy about the work you're doing and the people you're doing it with, um, and about making space for others to express their joy around you. So look. I'm probably going to get very excited and go off on a bunch of tangents about all the stuff that we're doing over the next couple of days. So this, these are the vibes for the next few days. I hours. love that. <laughs> Zero chill. That's Zero the chill. Today. No chill. Um, and then this final one I think is really important. And it was something that when I heard it really like blew my mind. Um, so Christopher Ireland said this. She's co-author of the Rise of the DEO book. Um, she said, asking for help is a recognition of others' value. And I think that is so powerful and beautiful so I think a lot of people can identify with this idea of especially when you're earlier on in career when your career where you're kind of afraid to ask other people for help because you feel like it you know reflects negatively on you and your skill set and then this just totally flipped that for me I was like yeah like asking for help means that that person has something that they can contribute or help you with so I think this is really important and a really like pillar for me in terms of a value so that's a quick introduction to me. I'm sure a bunch of other stuff will come up as we go. Um, so I just want to maybe get a little bit stuck into what we're doing. So today I'm going to introduce the project. So you'll have seen from the description that I'm going to be designing a web-based platform for design community. Um, so I'll introduce that, what it's about, how far I've gotten um, up until this point. Um, we'll define the visual direction a little bit. So I've done a little bit of exploration in advance played around with a few ideas, um, but there's still a few decisions to make. So it would be nice to maybe get some input, uh, a few steers from the group would be nice. Um, and then my goal for today is to get through, you know, two desktop concepts if we can. Um, so for me, I'm gonna focus on designing the desktop screens first. Um, a lot of the work I do, I do end up starting on desktop because I think for mobile, or for a lot of the projects, some projects mobile first makes sense, but for a lot of the projects I do, I find it easier to do all the creative thinking and concepting on a bigger canvas and then, you know, conforming to, you know, standard best practices on mobile, like things are a lot more constrained on mobile and I'm all for best practices when it comes to mobile. So I think for today, for the sake of the concepts, I'm going to focus on desktop. Let's see if we have time tomorrow to come back to mobile. Yeah, and then tomorrow, hopefully we get into a bit more detail. Uh, I like to set up like a typography system and make some decisions around that. Then set up a simple prototype. So just thinking between maybe two or three screens, nothing too hectic. And then get into some really fun interactions um, and animations and stuff like that. So that's that's my plan. Uh, and this this is how you can reach me on the internet. So on Behance and on Twitter, I'm at Aoife O'Dwyer. On Instagram, I'm at Aoife underscore Aoife. So for anyone that was like wondering why there's so many vowels in my name and it's pronounced Aoife, this EFA spelling is probably easier to get your head around. And yeah, that's me. Amazing. We get going. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully the chat, you listened into that manifesto. I loved all those points. Fergie mentioned that um, they love the perspective about asking for help, which I'm going to write that quote down because that that is good to have in your book. Good, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, it really is. Um, and then if anyone, if you're tuning in on Behance jump, or on YouTube, jump on over to Behance. That's where you'll be able to interact with the chat. Um, so Aoife mentioned asking for some um, people to jump in at points for feedback and stuff like Thanks. that. So jump on over to Behance so that you can engage with us in the chat. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think that's a good point. Like this, uh, this project is for a design community, and you know, you're all part of the design community. So let's just co-design this thing together. Um, so in terms of what it is, so here's a little bit of a, a context, a bit of perspective in terms of where where I've gotten to. So this idea initially came from a Slack community that I help um, manage, which is just very simply called Ireland Designs. So not the most creative name in the world, I admit. But we're going to go with it for now. Um, we can maybe maybe we can do another session afterwards around naming. Is there any is there any like brand name naming people in the crowd that would be great to get some steers? But for today we're going to stick with it. Um, and I guess this conversation we had this conversation amongst the admins a good while ago where we're like, well, you know, we have this Slack community. Um, it's kind of there's a few problems with it. So one is that it's kind of hard to track some of the resources. So a lot of people use it for, you know, sharing things about tools or jobs or sharing their work, or sharing articles that they're reading. Um, but then like, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to find that stuff on Slack if it goes away. Um, then there's also kind of, I think a lack of awareness about it, that it exists. So it's very much been 
grown through like word of mouth so far. So it's very like digital UX UI focused. But our hope at the beginning was that it'd be a bit more multidisciplinary. So like maybe if we had another platform that was more external facing, more people would know about it. Um, and then, oh yeah, there's two points there. That's a, there's a duplicate, there's a needle. Boop. So they're the three main issues that I think we need to solve. So I was thinking about this and we're like, what are we gonna, you know, what are we trying to do? So we have this platform that we wanna do, it's connected to the Slack community. And I was thinking of the things that it could include, so like a directory, some sort of blog or showcase. Um, and then, yeah, just to create um, a public space that was quite inclusive and inviting to help showcase the talent that we have in Ireland. So it's very specifically around, you know, people who are, are Irish or in Ireland, from Ireland, have lived or worked or studied here, any connection to Ireland, basically, you're welcome. Um, and any discipline. Um, so that's the thing, like it's for, in terms of audience, it's very much for the design community, by the design community in Ireland, but also the wider design community. Um, and I think it could also serve another purpose in terms of, you know, if you're looking for designers, you're looking to recruit or to like find people to collaborate with, uh, it could be a good resource for that. Or, you know, editors or curators of other blogs or magazines that are looking for content to feed in. I was like, that's another thing that could be useful for. Um, and yeah, the reasoning is very much around showcasing the, the talent that we have and also being like an easy place to go to to find resources. Um, and yeah, I think in terms of the how, like, I was thinking about this around, like, I want it to be quite fun. I want it to be quite engaging. Um, like, I want the patterns to feel a little bit innovative because, you know, we're designers. We can, you know, try and push the boundaries a little bit, but still want it to be quite familiar. And then obviously the, the reading experience is going to be quite paramount to this whole thing. So out of that came up with a few principles. Um, so I'll just go through those quickly. So it would be, needs to be supportive, inclusive and inviting. Innovati innovatively familiar. So I'm not sure exactly how to explain that, but it's like something that, you know, you know how to use that maybe it doesn't look totally familiar or totally, you know, regular. Uh, having a distinct brand voice and has a point of view. So having a, a particular stance on things, being very direct, I think that would be important. Clearly useful and relevant is a pretty much a no brainer. I think this probably goes for any project that you're gonna be doing. And then I want to also be fun and interactive with a touch of whimsy. Um, so I've definitely built this brief uh, to suit myself and so we can have a bit of fun over the next few hours <laughs> um but yeah this is kind of the the initial kind of groundwork the mission the goals what it is who it's for and we'll zoom out here a little bit um so then like once i got past that point i was having to think about i did a bit of benchmark research basically so i had a look at a couple of different places that are doing interesting things in terms of blogs or you know showcases um directories so there's a couple of great ones in ireland so district mag is a great one i really like this layout where there's like you know different color sections and there's these offset images and type i was like that could be cool and then there's these lovely like nice editorial layouts situated mag is another irish um online platform you know mixed topics and i was like okay these are nice and they're interspersed with these nice big features quite visual 100 archives another one in ireland so this kind of doubles up as a couple of they're doing a lot of things so they do have kind of a blog and they have a community um and i was like okay these showcase pages they're very you know easy to understand it's like quite clear and lots of big lovely images and then um design up is a great new platform that was launched a couple of months ago so this is the theme of this platform is like a directory for like designers of color in ireland um, and I was like, okay, this is cool. So I was coming in here to have a look at, you know, the type of information that we might need from a directory module, um, that kind of thing. And then some other directories like ADP list. So this is another great platform to kind of find mentors. And they're doing a bunch of different things. So I was like, yeah, okay, there's different types of content or different cards that we're going to need. It's going to be like the individual people. There's going to be, you know, events or blogs. So I was like, okay, interesting. There's some cool stuff here. And similarly, Career Design Club, you know, how do you, filter through different people, what way, what kind of information do we need to showcase for them? Um, so this again is another example of like a niche directory type platform, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, what about other communities that are connected to Slack? So there's, I found a few, so there's like better product community. And I think there's a couple of interesting things here in terms of styling, but also like here's a manifesto or like a, what we're about benefits of joining and then like there's content stuff which is 
nicely kind of laid out in terms of like different topics or categories. So these are things I was thinking about that we would need for the Ireland design platform. And then further looking into, you know, okay, jobs. Oh yeah, that's the thing. So like the, the Slack community actually originally happened because of, it was like a, a recruitment effort. It was like a place to kind of connect designers, but I attach them to jobs. So I was like, okay, maybe we could have a, a jobs board. That could be quite useful. And then finally I found this good examples of the design leadership community. So again, they're doing lots of different things. I was trying to think about like how you kind of lead in. So like you're kind of introducing what this is and you're kind of given a call to action to join the community and then talking about some of the other things that we would do. So the moment we don't do anything else, you know, we just have the Slack community. So this is a big ask for this project is what are the things we could do? Um, could we do events? Um, that kind of thing. So those are, those are some of the infos very quickly. That's awesome. I think you have such a good blend of like looking at, you know, different sites that exist already that serve a certain audience or that have a different function, like that directory you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if we could crowdsource in a couple others as well. If you know in the chat of any other communities exactly. um, or community platforms specific to designers or honestly, really anyone could be interesting to see um, what those platforms yeah, are. Because I'm yeah. sure there's tons out there. Like those are a few that I found that I'm aware of. Um, and I think, you know, my mission was like, try and pull out like what's, what type of content do these platforms and communities have and use? Like what's yeah. useful to the, the people that are in that, that community? Um, which kind of leans on neatly to this structure. So this is the, all the things that it could be layout. Um, so like realistically, we're obviously not gonna do all of this. So I've tagged a few pages that I'd like to ideally get through over the next two days. So obviously we need a landing page. Um, and I think the primary function of this is really the showcase. So like a landing page that's, you know, promoting the different types of content to different designers that we're showcasing, but also something a bit more detailed, like if we did an interview with someone or if we were doing a feature on, you know, several designers within a particular discipline or whatever it might be. I was like, I, I think that'd be nice as an MVP. If we were to decide we were doing this tomorrow, I think these are the three pages that we would need realistically. Awesome. So yeah. And again, just I was having to think about, you know, who's it for? So like, like this kind of section is kind of outward facing and could be useful maybe for recruiters or externally. So a directory of the designers that are, you know, in the community and their profiles. Um, and then also the showcases external into use case studies, think pieces, you know, that are written specifically for the platform. And then it starts to be kind of more internal. So for the community itself, so resources, so different things that we're reading or writing, stuff about tools or tutorials, the jobs and events as well. So this is kind of the... I'm in the design community and I would like to, you know, learn and improve uh, and or get a job, whatever it might be, network. And then this kind of wing is kind of, I want to promote and show off my work um, and talk a little bit about what the things that I'm interested in. So that's how I we see have, it. We have someone in the chat who I think is maybe a photographer, Caitlin, mm -hmm. said that photographers need a designated platform for networking, feedback and organizing shoots all in one. Um, when they're doing a photography shoot, they're always using three to four apps and it's just too much. So that's an interesting thing to think about is, you know, if people are using multiple ones, how do you bring all those use cases in one, which I think you're already figuring out, you know, what those different cases are. Yeah, I think that that is interesting. It's like, you know, design doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, if you're a part of a team, you have a team to collaborate with. Um, for like examples like that, like photography or other disciplines where it's maybe more freelance based, you're going to need to find collaborators. So I think that's a really interesting angle too. That's like a specific need. So that again was something I was thinking about in terms of like, how do we tag the directory? How do we, mm -hmm. um, you know, categorize different people and the type of work that they're open to uh, similarly for the jobs board. So I think that's a really interesting insight. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So. I'm eager to get to the actual trying to figure stuff out stuff. So I'm going to take you through some of the, 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 the last little bit of prep and intro that I've done. So, uh, I well, love I guess the colors just want to mention that <laughs> the colors, I have They're made so some, bright. some decisions around some colors. Uh, I've been playing around a little bit with, you know, what could we do with type? Um, and I think from a, a visual perspective, like I really want to play around with some shapes. So I think as well, like this for me is an opportunity to maybe play around with styles or approaches that maybe I don't get a chance to do day to day so often. So I was like, okay, what kind of cool shapes? I was literally in here and I was like 
like with the polygon tool and I was like changing all these guys I was like okay what happens if I do 40 okay no maybe this 60 I don't know if do anything and I was just like messing around with these figures over here being like what will it do to my shape and will it be really cool or will it be really weird see so anyway I came up with a bunch of different shapes and I kind of gravitated towards this little guy which gives me like sticker vibes you know, it looks like a little stamp or a sticker. Um, so that very much led to me being like, okay, let's get a, a very quick, basic, what's the new logo gonna be? So I literally just put the name in one of these little shapes and I expanded it. So like when I stretched it, but I didn't stretch it proportionally and it gave me these little star stickers. I'm not sure what to call them. If anybody has a good name for what we should call these little tags for the different categories I would appreciate because I was like what shape is that I don't know um but I thought it was kind of fun <laughs> oh I love that it is it is kind of like a stamp almost or like a yeah I've seen it it's that familiar but then innovative it's exactly what you're going uh, for you know yeah. awesome. <laughs> Full <circle. Good> start. <laughs> okay so that's where I'm at in terms of like initial exploration in terms of what things could look like so like I was trying to pair some fonts as well. Like these are all either free or from Adobe fonts. And I like the style of mixing typography, um, but I haven't committed to any of these yet. So this is something that we might, you know, make a decision on together. Um, a few things that I kind of ended up coming back to. So like in the actual logo and these labels, I'm using this Bebath Noya. You know, when you have never actually had to say anything out loud and you've always read it in your head, is that how that's pronounced? That's a Bebeth. really good point. I actually don't Bebeth. know. Let us Bebeth. let us know Bebeth. if anyone knows in there. Yeah, is that I'm Bebeth curious. Or hmm. Yeah, how do you how do you, you said you like com combining different fonts together? How would hmm. you recommend someone to go about that? You know, do you use like websites for inspiration, or do you kind of just use a visual sense, or what do you how do you approach that? Yes, all the things. <laughs> so I think for mixing type. The, like what I find tends to work is mixing widths and styles, obviously. Um, but I, I think when I'm looking at these ones, the ones that are more successful are either like these guys where there's like a, a quite a, a difference between the, the weight um, or like down here where it's a bit more subtle. So there's kind of, it depends. Um, I think there's places you can, there's tons of websites that give you recommendations on font pairings. Like there was, there was one of these that I, that I synced from Adobe fonts and it was really like, oh, there's like pairings down the bottom. So that's, that's one place. Um, fonts in use is another good site to see how different things are paired. Um, but I think it's really just experimentation. You just start messing around with stuff. And like, I've literally just done these, like I just put this in as one sentence and I've like highlighted a, a specific word and gone in here and you know messed around with what fonts are in here. I did have a sense coming into that this deliberately, I was like, oh, what about a black letter? It's like black letter doesn't really get a lot of love in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, usage. So this is why I kind of came to this escapade fracture. Let's go with that pronunciation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I wanted to see what that would look like. Um, and then again here, this is, these are just two different weights of rock grotesque. So this one is extra wide light and this one, is extra bold so like these are in the same family so that's it could be another tip if you find a font family that has quite like a a, a wider a varied set of styles or weights um playing around with them can actually be really good because they're already in the same family it's probably a good starting point yeah i was gonna say that's a that's a really good point like finding when you are choosing fonts for your designs to find one that has that variety so that you can always play around with things it's like, a, it's like a, an easy go-to almost in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think so. it's nice. And it's, it's actually this brings me, so this relates as well to like, I think the the thumbnail project that, that for this live is, is a project where I really kind of had fun with typography. So it's a project called meansandmatters.com and we've actually mixed three different fonts, which is wild. Um, but we were like, okay, well, this seems intense, but like, it looks really good, but we're like, okay, we're only going to use this a very specific context so it's only for like super big heroes or like headings or like the big stuff at the top of the page basically and then we kind of picked um one of the other fonts to be like the standard headline throughout so it didn't get too hectic so i think that's another thing to keep in mind if you're gonna go down this route of mixing 
different typefaces and fonts and stuff is to be deliberate and be strict about where and how you're using it. Awesome. So for those who are just joining us, it looks like we got a Met that just joined us in here. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Um, so we have gone through basically the foundation so far of what Aoife is going to be designing today, which is a community platform. And we just went through mm -hmm. the brand exploration side of things. So what are we going to be jumping into next? So I think it's time to get into screens. So like these, like I don't really need to talk to these too much. So this is like the, um, the grid that I've got um, going on. So nothing too hectic. Um, I've got 16 columns, kind of trying to stick to numbers of eight. So we've got like a 32 pixel gutter. We've got an 80 pixel column width and we've got 30 pixels either side as well for a little bit of padding. And this is like a HD kind of scenario. So this is, this artboard here is like 1820 pixels wide. So, you know, large desktops for the most part. Um, and then this kind of subsection in here is actually just me marking out for like a 1680 pixel type screens, which is another kind of quite common one. So like if I keep my designs within this framework, which I put into, I've got some guides too. So the guides here will help me kind of accommodate like a slightly smaller desktop screen within the one layout, which is why I like this particular grid as a go-to. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're set up with from a grid perspective. So let's get into it. So I've got a little bit of, got some setup down here. So this is like a pretty typical way that I would lay out my artboards when I'm starting a project. So I've got a couple of wireframes. Wireframes are very lo-fi. So these are some quick, just like paper sketches that I did. Um, I did add a bit of color for your benefit. Usually I don't bother to go to the benefit of the color, but I do have these like really fancy pastel highlighters. Um, might have been influenced, the color palette might have been influenced by them actually. Um, oh wow. <laughs> really nice, like I show them, maybe I can show them with these ones. Oh, mm -hmm. they're so cool. Nice. Um, yeah, they're really nice. Um, so yeah, like in terms of color palette too, like I really think it's like post-it notes, highlighters. Those are the vibes from a color perspective, I think. That's awesome. Um, I love but, also the experimentation that you're going for, like even with the shapes, just messing around in XD and writing different values to see what happens. That's yeah. something that I, I I love about you so far is like all into experimentation and going for it. Yeah, I didn't know how that was gonna go. That was actually a really fun time. We might try and yeah. make some new shapes while we're here over the next, how, how long we got left, an hour and a bit. Um, <laughs> so uh, for the first page, so the landing page feels like a good place to start, doesn't it? Uh, pretty obvious. Um, let me just, Grid up here again. So what we're looking at, oh no, don't want grid on that one. So I'll talk through the, the wireframe first. So what I was thinking about here is it's kind of double thing here. So it's kind of these post-its first. So I was trying to figure out like what's the intention, what am I trying to do at each stage, and then kind of marrying it to some visuals. So you can see I've already kind of tried to incorporate here where I think we could be playful in terms of like shapes or you know deviate a little bit from square boxes everywhere. Um, but like primarily the way I'm looking at this for the landing pages, we need to start off with like, introduce what it is, you know, and the main call to action would be to, you know, to join the community realistically. Um, and then straight into some like big feature, which would be featuring somebody's work, um, but like specifically calling out that person as well. So it's a link to both like, the showcase and the directory in one. So a nice big visual to entice people in because it's gonna be a lovely work popped in there. And then show a little bit about what other types of content are on the site. So like the, the site is largely like a blog really for the most part. So this would be a mix of like, you know, is it an interview style? Is it a Q and A? Is it um, a list or is it um, a specific case study or what is it? So like a few different types of like featured content here, just to give a sense of the type of content that could be on the site so that we can hook people and you know, be like, yeah, this looks interesting. I want to read more. Um, and then I did a little thing here that happened where I was like laying out like the resources are gonna be super important then. Um, and directly under like so the resources is very much like community face. So like so far this is this is maybe externally facing, showing off how great we are and all the great stuff that we're doing and talking about. And then a little bit more internally facing. So like what are the resources that we have? So can we point to specific help on tools? Is there tutorials? Is there, you know, Maybe talk a little bit about jobs here. Like you have this, I see I have this loose jobs 
thing here because they're trying to figure out where to put it in. So maybe you guys can give me a steer on that. Um, and then immediately after that, some sort of call to action to either like subscribe to a newsletter or maybe it's join the community here again, because um, I'm kind of trying to connect like what is really useful to, you know, trigger that action. Um, and then a bit of a profile, some profiles here with the people, the different designers in the directory. I have this arrow here because I was questioning, I was like, oh, is the directory more important? Should I like move that up before the resources or because it's, you know, external facing or should I keep it? with my initial thought, which was keep it focused on providing stuff for the community. So maybe that's a question. Maybe people have ideas around that. And then I was like, okay, what else could we have? We could have events, some other big call to action to join the community and some handy links at the end. So you can see when I, I like I laid out here, like what I found useful when I was doing this is I color coded these based on the different sections we have. So generally speaking from a landing page or a home page, I think it's really useful to have a way to navigate to all the main sections of the site, which is why we have this orphaned job section. I was like, oh, if we have a jobs board, I haven't mentioned anything about jobs in this wireframe. So we might add that in as well. Um, but yeah, the approach to that I usually take in terms of wireframing is kind of lo-fi, quick, um, get some ideas down and then start mocking stuff up. So which I'm gonna start doing now. <laughs> yeah, did you draw this on your um, notepad or sketchpad and then yeah. pull that in? I have it here. Next so week. Like, there's a line. There's like a little. Oh, wow. There it is. Dotted notebook thing. And I, yeah, just, and it, it, it's convenient that they kind of fit in, uh, like, yeah. into one page. I don't know what happened, but yeah, yeah. it worked out nice this, nice this time. Yeah. Um, so it, it just goes to show you can really, you can pull in just hand drawn sketches. There even are some plugins where you can sketch in XD itself. Um, which is kind of cool, but I love just being able to pull in your own sketch as well. Yeah, I think it's really handy. Like, I mean, like for me, I guess how I work a lot of the times is I just start into the visuals as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, so for me, like, even if I just had like these, which were like, you know, a hero introducing the site, um, you know, a big featured article, whatever it might be, can just be quite simple in terms of this is a hierarchy, this is the thing that it's going to be. And then I kind of mess around and figure out the, the, lay, the layout, either roughly like this in a sketch format um, or just directly on the artboard. Well, so. people in the chat already love it. We have Harry who said, this is looking great with three exclamation points. Um, we have Wade who said, digging the rough sketches for the layout. And then Ahmet says, it will be very, very fun work. So awesome. people are excited so far. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's let's get started. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this, this guy down here so I have it nearby. And uh, let's get to it. So, you know, I generally start at the top and work my way down. I think that's a fair way to go. So I've already got this guy set up as a component. So I'm just going to paste it over here. Uh, guides and I was thinking of this like you can see in the sketch here that I was like oh maybe it can be like a middle aligned type of thing you know you see like logos like you know top left is like super good practice love it works I was like hmm, maybe we could do something a little bit different way we can put in the middle so I'm going to start there so this is kind of the the initial thought that I had in mind we'll see if this is how we end up in the end it might not um so we've got this, and then we need to figure out some links. Um, so here's the first part where we need to figure out some typography. So I was having to think about this, and I feel like I don't want it to be exactly the same as what's in the logo. Like this space grotesque isn't, I'm just kind of looking at this, I feel like it looks nice. I'm gonna try that as like a menu link, potentially. So what do we need? Uh, leave the directory and just move over here. And then what do we need? We have some have some styles set up here too, so it definitely should be black. Um that didn't say that right. space grotesque. Mm. Awesome. So you're making sure you have a different font for the navigation bar versus the logo. So the logo oh, is Bebas, is that right? Bebas no yeah. Let's nice. go with that. Yes, I best know yeah. Um, so it's like a, a narrow, condensed, uppercase type of thing. And then 
feel like I'm going to try out this space grotesque option for maybe links or body copy. Could work for body copy too, but we'll see. I'm not, I'm kind of very much a strong opinions loosely held kind of gal. So we'll see if this sticks, but for now let's go to it to get some stuff mocked up. Feels a little bit light, so I'm gonna maybe knock it up to medium. Uh, does that feel like a good size? Let's do it for now. And then what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna add this as a, a character style. And then I'm gonna command K to make it a component. So I want to be able to repeat this. And then also like if I if I change the style here later, which is very possible, uh, I can just change it in one place. Which is handy. And that's the value of a component for those who are new to XD. Oh, you make it components. once, you make a change, it goes everywhere. So everywhere. think of it as that main and child. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 32 spacing feels good. So I'm not too worried about these columns and kind of aligning it to this edge here. Um, 32, yeah, let's leave that there. And then, where's my original? I'm just going to duplicate that so that. I can keep um, the master over here. No, I'm gonna leave it for now. I can come back to it. So sometimes as well, I like set up a separate artboard for like master components. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good practice. So you know where they all are. Yeah. I mean, some like. We'll see. I might I might change my mind on that because sometimes it's like I wait until the design feels like it's mostly resolved. So I might end up changing it here to see what it looks like. What else do we have right. in our menu? We have um, resources. We have jobs. Those grids come in handy, that's for sure. Yeah, we got it. And, and we will have something, some sort of join, like join the community type thing. Join us sounds a little bit. <laughs> join us. Let's just call it join. Let's just leave it for join for now. So I might do something different with that. So I'm going to. Um, on group. I don't want that to be. Where's the whole thingy majiggy for detaching it from? So you, can you see how to detach it? So here's another thing as well as like, sometimes you're just like, how do you do that again? <laughs> what those shortcuts are and stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, on group. It looks like it was clicked in, double clicked in. Yeah. That might've been what happened. Oh, maybe. Okay. Well, let's just. There we go. Ta -da. Nice. Figured it out. So either we join us, join community or join. If anyone okay. in the chat has any suggestions. Yeah. I feel like that might be, maybe, maybe we'll make that like the, the best no, yeah. as well. What size is this? It's 24. Let's make this 24 as well. Um, so this might be like our, this might become our CTA label style. Okay, so for these guys, I'm just gonna group, 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 group. I'm gonna set these up as stacks too in case I change my mind. So like with these as well as like, if I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe events is more important. I can like show me that over here, super handy. And then we will, I'm gonna connect all these up into like at a very basic level, there's like a top, top navigation. Feels a bit far from the top. Let's go up a bit, align this a bit. Okay. Now, awesome. Look at that. We've we got go. our navigation down. Yeah. And I did, I did, I did cheat a little bit and I did a little bit of interaction on this logo. So I just actually want to see if that's still in there. So if I just took here, 
Ah. Yeah. So Whoa. I might talk to that. So I was like looking at this. When I go in here to the logo. So there's like this hover state, which is another part where I was like, ah, oh, let's play around with the shapes and see what they can do. So it changed from, let's see. Um, so we are playing right now with the magic of components and component states, right? Yeah. Like this hover state feature is, I just love it. It's so good. So like this is the default state and what I've got in the layers here is, so um, this is our menu here. So in the logo, there's like a little hidden category here where I've got this little thing with like the, how many members they have. And then there's like the logo itself, which is just like the text on this wibbly star shape. Um, so yeah, so for the defaults, they just have this little members tag hidden. And then on hover, I've like revealed the members. I don't know if that number is right. Actually, I think there might be more of us or maybe less, I don't know. Um, and then I changed the shape. So this is the same shape, but I've just messed around. I've changed the color. And I've changed like how many spikes there is and I like removed the rounding off it and then it does this cool like extra spiky thing and then it's set to um set to auto animate so prototype here just auto animate so it just kind of moves from the one shape in the default state to the new settings in the hover state and it does a cool thing in my jiggy yeah let's see it um, again so I'm like ooh. wow I've never played around with those shapes, doing auto animate with those shapes. That's such a so good, fun. so fun. Yeah, it's so I fun. love that. I so something, that something <laughs> key there is to make sure all those layers are named the same. So what yes. you mentioned, having that grouping in the original default state, you know, that make that makes sure that any new state you create still has that grouping, even if it wasn't visible originally. Exactly. Yeah. So the members is in here, but like the opacity is set down to zero um, so that when I go into set up the hover state, um, I can bump up that opacity to 100%. Nice. So it appears also change the position a little bit on that guy. So it kind of like it tilts in, like rotates a little bit in from like zero to 20 degrees. So there's a couple of things going on there from a, a moving perspective, which is tons of fun. Um, yeah, I really enjoy putting that together. So that's our basic header logo navigation thing going on. I'm not going to get too into, like, we definitely need like hover states and active states for the rest of the menu items, but I'm going to leave that for tomorrow. Um, Cause like my mission for today is trying to get some of these pages a bit more mocked up. So what's next? So for, for those who just joined, I see a hmm. couple more folks in here. So we just went through the foundations earlier. So setting out, you know, the visual design of the um, community platform that Aoife is designing today. And then we just went through creating that main navigation. Um, so welcome to those who are in here. Welcome. We also had a su couple suggestions for that join button that we oh, have yes, there. Please. One is join community makes it clear for viewers to know exactly what that click will do. So that's one suggestion. Yeah, I, like I think that. there was one other suggestion around like register. So if they're going to be registering for something, mm. um, using that clear language as well. So there's some two, yes, two different ideas. Yeah. Cause I guess there is a registration step for, yeah. That so could I be the first them. UX almost. Yeah. We'll put that in there as a register. I like the idea of joining community because it like join is like the collective or we're going to get together right. and the community kind of describes what it is. I think that's actually a nice day, but I'm going to go with that for now. So thanks for that um, suggestion. Whoever you said that, thank you Kandi, for your expertise. That was Fergie. Okay. Thanks Fergie. Fergie. Thank you Fergie. Um, okay. So here, so like my initial idea here and these lovely rough sketches were to maybe have some, like some big, some big type here. So I've just, left this in our previous Noya font to match the logo, kind of like a like a good like display headline font. And then I want to bring in some sort of little explainer. So I'm gonna grab this. I think this is the combo that I was like, this works for me. So if we were to drop in a little bit of info, so like I don't really have copy necessarily here, but it's like, what are we here? Uh, you know, 
Oh, I need some help with coffee, but like, let's just make it intentional. Introduction to the platform. Yeah. How often do you use like placeholder text or do you always work with a copywriter like in the beginning of a project? Well, it, uh, it depends. Like, uh, like ideally, like I love working with real content. Like I, I don't, like I don't have real content for this. Uh, I might make some up, some stuff up as we go, but I think for the purposes of layout, I think filler copy can be good, but only if you know you're going to have content for it, if that makes sense. So here I'm like, okay, we'll definitely be able to come up with a some sort of statement, which is we are blah, blah, blah. Like design community based in Ireland, uh, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. Like I do have this, plugins and got plugins or it's someone um so i can place in some that's one of my favorite plugins yeah so, like super easy put in some blurb here which is might even be i don't even need to do that much but yeah like some sort of like introduction this is this is what we are and then i think it's a case of another button really i'm going to pull the elements that we have in the logo um so here i might be all these guys what's awesome about that being a component is you'll still have that really really cool hover state so if you just joined us, we have a really awesome hover state on that little button there, or not button, it's a, a stamp sticker, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I've actually like pulled this away from the- um, Oh, the component. component. Yeah, because I kind of want to keep that for just the logo. So like I'm pulling this shape in mm, to kind of figure out if it will work as a stamp. Um, if I group that there, I feel like a little angle might be nice on that. So like, well, like nice. Minus 20 and then, okay, I didn't group them. So group the text and the shape, give it a little minus 20 and then and we can scale. It's like bigger for the, the big button. Let's play around with this. That looks pretty mad. Uh, let's get it done I love how playful it is so far. Even just having that stamp in there. Yeah. Like maybe the color, like let's see how we could. So I'm trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out as well what way to focus on call to action. So like the logo I'm going with this purple color. Um, so maybe that becomes like our primary CTA color, but also there's like all of these guys. Kind of like that green. Let's just put this in here for now. Make that black. And then I think it'd be nice to put in some. I'm going to grab some. Let's grab this blue. If we were to drop in. So when working with color, I heard you mention something, which is to make sure that the the colors match that action behind so you said having a cta color is good yeah exactly so i'm trying to like when i'm going through this there's a bunch of colors like the this is one thing that like can be tricky with very colorful palettes is that all the things are going to be quite attention grabbing and it's like if there's a if you can find a consistent color that's like the the main action like to write like what, whatever the the module is that you're doing um i think for some of these shapes they benefit from the fact that they do look quite inviting and like, you know, that looks like a sticker or something you would boop, stamp um, or interact with some way tangibly. So I feel like we can get away with it. I want to play around with different colors, but I think fundamentally it's good to have one core call to action color. So I'm going to pull in some work now. So uh, lots of people sent me work that I can use in this. I got all this lovely work from the Irish design community. Wow, oh, look at that. looks nice. I'm going to drop this in. Um, and actually, because it's kind of white, I'm going to duplicate, and then I'm going to bring down the 
opacity a little bit on that. And then it will be a bit of color. Let's see how it comes in. So we'll have some sort of and then group them. Yeah. Let's see. So you're pulling in, this is real art from the Irish design community? Yeah, so this is a piece by Eric Lynch. This is like a poster. It's really nice. It's so awesome. And then maybe we will do like a, let's just put in some squares. So for everyone who just joined, we are working on a community platform for designers. So Aoife is bringing in real art from her Irish design community. That's what you see on the right over there. So much talent. I can only imagine. Yeah, we got some very skilled people. Okay, what can we put in here? Oh, it's quite hard to choose, isn't it? Um, Okay. This is going to be a shoe. Look at this pattern. That's quite nice. Um, So I think I want to mix... Um, the kind of disciplines that are here as well in the kind of hero era. So you've got some kind of like print graphic design thing going on here. So maybe we bring in um, something that's a bit more digital. I wanted that to drop in there. So I'll do it again. Yeah, get the highlight, drop it in. And then I want to keep that in the proportion. So I feel like this one, this one needs to be visible to get the sense of what it is. Yeah, so actually I actually might just drop that in directly. Oops. So this work by Jamie Ritchie. Try and shout out people as I go. And then put it back. Some artist highlights. We'll have an artist spotlight tomorrow as well. So if you join mm-hmm. us tomorrow, be patient for that. But right now we're already already highlighting some artists, which is awesome. All right, I don't want to get too bogged down in, oh, I kind of grab my group. There it is. It's like a, it's just like a really stylish Easter egg, isn't it? <laughs> that shape. Kind of, hey. <laughs> yeah, not too long ago. Yeah, let's leave it for now. Um, yes, yeah, so it's very much a kind of a, right now I'm in the stage of just getting lots of stuff down and then I'm gonna come back and refine it later. Um, I feel like something needs to be happening up here. What do you think? Maybe we'll put in some of these. Oh, this star shape, do you wonder? So 100% in experimentation mode right now. Not too worried about getting it exactly. It's the sunshine. Is that a bit misleading? We did have a little bit of sunshine today. Ireland sometimes is we're giving it. <laughs> we're giving a spotlight, you know, <laughs> yeah. sunshine on to the artists. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, let's go to. I think it's nice as well. Some of these, like, I had these like outline shapes too. Um, like, hmm, hmm. grab this guy. So these as well, in terms of like when I made these, um, it's quite easy to make interesting shapes. Um, NXT. So for this, this little chappy here was basically a rectangle. So like I'm making it in there now. It's like got this rectangle. I kind of wanted to proportion it, give it its color, and then basically just like rounded the top two corners. So I did that up here, and I was like, okay, what's the width? The width is like two eight five. So if I make that three hundred, and if I make this one. 300 then it like gives you this nice art shape and it's super easy it's like a window yeah um so this is kind of a like i had this in my mind as a shape i might use to distinguish like the individual designers um and creatives um versus like squares or ovals which i might use for actual artwork um so again it's like i'm trying to think about a system that could be applied throughout the whole platform so when you see this arch there's going to be somebody's face in there. It's going to be directly linked to like the directory section or something like that. So trying to create connections like within the visual language that can be used to, you know, speak to the different sections of the different types of content. 
Um, but, I love yeah. that it's being very, very intentional. And it's, it's almost like that behind the scenes work that you do, you know, color associations as well as shape associate associations ah, tongue twister. Yeah. <laughs> that's and awesome the associations so i want to just introduce the shape um maybe nice or smaller what you think just a little bit so that there's a hint of it but it's not um it's not like the main thing and I'll grab this little lead. Back and apply this border. And then just bring in some emphasis or energy. So like another thing here as well as I can conscious of when I'm looking at all this now is that I want it to bleed past the like this fold line here. So like this is set up for like, um, like it's 1680 by 1050 is like, for like 1050 is pretty common height for like large desktop. So this is where I set the, this fold line to. So I'm kind of like looking at this one like, oh, I think I'd like it to, you know, bleed in a little bit. I kind of had an indication here. That's something I might want to do. Um, so maybe it's the button is enough. I'm going to leave it here. Mm. as you do this this like layout exercise do you ever think about how like that motion later on that you'll bring in will look like when you're when you're playing with shapes yeah big time <laughs> so like even when these are coming in like this is pretty like this is pretty hectic so far so i'm like already conscious of like how this will load in like i think for like a hero when you land on a page yeah like if you can make it really eye catching super like why not like make the things move like yeah but when I'm looking at these I kind of don't want them to be too I'm envisioning these coming in kind of maybe a little bit more subtly than like the the logo interaction I feel like that's like the it's the logo it's the brand it's like the the, the hero it like brings you back to the landing page a big extravagant interaction awesome but I think elsewhere I feel like these guys coming in a bit more subtly would be better uh, that's my instinct right now, but we'll see. Uh, see how I find it. See how I feel tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to group all these now and leave this for now because, again, very much want to start getting through modules. So this is another thing that happens kind of early on, where it's like you can get the components in, and then you can figure out the details later. So I'm also going to try and do a little bit of housekeeping. So look, don't have the best. Uh, grouping and layer naming have it in the world, but I do try sometimes. It's a hard one. I know. I always wonder, you know, how many people name all of their layers? How many don't? <laughs> Whether yeah. I'm in the minority or majority on that one. So let us know in the chat. Let us know if you name your layers, if you group them, or if you do housekeeping at all during your process. Okay. I'm just kind of like organizing them. I'll make this like this makes sense to make that a component too. Um, then we can just copy that across all our different pages. Um, we still need to kind of come back to the community. And like I'm wondering, oh, maybe I can, that's a pretty glaring omission here in the hero. I like the, um, this oval shape potentially. I was looking at this as well for like maybe a hover or something, but it might be nice as like a, a secondary button type thing and we'll we'll come back to this tomorrow maybe and do a little interaction a little yeah. hover thing on it so i just want to you know, set that for myself as like a to do here is like there will be some sort of thing happening over here um maybe we can do something with the color so we have this green Behind it. So maybe yeah, there's some sort of there needs to be some sort of indication around that guy. Uh, yeah. I'll probably be connected to this hero but I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, okay. So let's try and get some more bits down. So next we have this like big featured um, piece of work. Uh, so let's just straight up 
it be maybe a rectangle kind of how you got that six eight two okay get rid of this just gonna change to black so you can see it and send it to the back and then make another one for this side change the color on that guy Let's see, let's zoom in here. So it's right below that scroll point. Yeah, exactly. So like, I do like the idea of some of this bleeding in to indicate that there's all the actions down here. Like, um, I think there'll be, let's go here, I want my pull. See, like I said, I was gonna move on, but I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> I think there needs to be a caption for these. Um, Oops. Kitchen. I like. I'm going to change the color so you can see it. I'm just going to say bye. Nietzsche. And then maybe like using the directory, so we give them a little, little line to indicate that there's um, we can follow that through. So kind of like a subtle text link, perhaps to link to the directory. Yeah. Below. So like so like to to link through to to Jamie's profile um, or like more examples of his work. And similarly, like over here, we like. Yeah, I love that idea because you could always yeah. also like change that out if you want to highlight different artists every month. Yeah. You know, you can also, yeah, you can change those out and highlight them. We had a couple a couple of folks in the chat um, respond to our question about naming layers. So mm -hmm. Fergie, who gave us that nice suggestion for the join button, said that I am team name your layers. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's a good team to be on. Um, yeah. But then we have a lot of folks who say, you know, I could be better at naming layers. Um, be honest, do you really name your layers? It's it's hard. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, some people can't deal with like having rectangle 10, rectangle 3, rectangle 4. Um, I I am very bad at naming my layers, if I'm being honest with myself. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. for handoff, I also recognize how that's very, very important. So sometimes housekeeping is is required. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I was looking at this and I'm like, mm, it's kind of the same like heading type. I feel like that needs, I want it to be more like a caption one. I want to, let's see what it looks like in Space Grotesque. Smaller piece. Thank you. Um, and this is where like I should have set this as caption style over here. And then I can type answer. Um, down here, I guess you can read it. Can I keep them? Yeah, that's always a that's a good a good practice, just so you can change them throughout. Yeah, because um, like like I mentioned, it's very much the try loads of things kind of situation. Um, and like you know, I might change my mind halfway through this. We might come up with something better um, and I want to change it and it'll be much easier to manage that if I have it set up as a textile character style I should say so I'm coming in here so I've picked uh, this work here by Nathan Bulger who is awesome who I know quite well as well we used to work together so he has this great project he, he published this on Behance like last week and it looks really good so what I'm going to do is like use this section here for like a big scrolling area so this is how i feel like i want to scroll through a few options so if i like, duplicate that shape here so then one two three and then i'm going to drag in some other images this just are these all the same artist yeah, so this is all this is like one project. Actually, might, that's a good point. Actually, you might like mix up the like a few different examples from 
um, I'll look. Look at all these lovely people. Look them all up. Hard to spotlight. Bothered. Other examples in here, different projects. See so yeah, how we can kind of mix it up. It could be like a, so a few different objects to highlight. Maybe something. Yeah, something a bit of mobile. Cool. So my plan for this is to like group these. Okay, I'll name the group. Works. That was one suggestion someone mentioned is name or group a grouping of things and name that so it looks more organized. It's yeah. like it's a good tip. It is. So I've set that in a group with some like vertical scrolling here, and I've just kind of set it into to view one at a time. So hopefully, let's see if this works. Oops. Um, this artboard, please. So, ah, yeah, I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you come down here, because I set this as a scrolling area, it should ah, awesome. scroll to a few projects and then it keeps going down the rest of the page. So it's not like perfect, but it's, I think it's really nice to be able to indicate like your intention here in terms of an interaction or a scroll interaction. So that's nice. I love this. It's looking good so far. So we are a little bit over halfway and we have some new folks join in. So we are working in XD right now, um, which is great for designing digital experiences. So we're here with Aoife and we're working on a design community platform. So as you can see, there's a ton of color, a lot of fun. And we're also sh showcasing um, Irish designers in here. So tons of artist spotlights. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple of reminders. We have the daily creative challenge with Andrea Epi that's happening today after the stream at 2 p.m. And it's also happening every day. So check out that daily creative challenge to see what it is. If you are over on YouTube, jump on over to Behance. We have the chat going strong. So if you want to, you know, hop in with some tips, hop in with some questions for Aoife throughout this stream, um, that is a great place to, to do it. So what part are we adding in now, the name and a little caption? Yeah, so I was like, okay, we need to feature some of these lovely people. So one of the kind of content types or cards I think we're gonna need is something like this, which is like a directory profile card, um, as indicated in my sketch by this little dude. Um, so this is what I've been thinking, I will see how it translates when I start mucking it up, because it's another thing, like sometimes what you think in your brain doesn't necessarily translate on screen, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, now, I don't have photographs of everybody, so I have downloaded some Adobe stock portraits. Um, let's see, I don't know if I have any of that looks like Nathan. Hmm. 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 Okay, let's just put in, let's just put in this guy. Yeah. Nathan, not I mean, really Nathan, but not really Nathan. I mean, it works. He's kind of he's like you know working remotely. Like Nathan's based in Bali. He's like a digital nomad, living his best life. So that's a dream, so, you know. Um, and then I think we need like a background here for this um, type. That to back. I really order. love that that window shape that you're going for. Um, Nice, especially the artists right it's like a window into their work yeah kind of meta in that. that way let's put that in the brand guidelines yeah yeah there Credit you go <laughs> um so like you can see now how it's like the position of this call to action is now sitting like like hmm, is that right but the focus is on this now i'm thinking of like what we put in here so we have like his name maybe a little blurb so this is still Lorem Ipsum, um, which isn't ideal, but let's go with it for now. Um, let's give us a bit of space. I'm kind of trying to figure out as well, like what kind of spacing we want, like one, two, three, like 30 pixels each side. Yeah. So. Try 20. Center that, let's see. 
Um, and then realistically for a profile like this, I feel like we want some links maybe or some sort of call to action to go through. So let me group some of this and send it back, but not all the way back, please. Um, so let's see. Uh, we have this style here. I might duplicate. Whoops. Bring it down. Happens to oh, me all the funny, time. funny, I had named my layer here. <laughs> okay, so that got coffee in there. Let's move it up. I want to look at that for a second. Put this on. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now this one does feel more like a call to action. So we're using the best Maya. So maybe it's like you work. Uh, again, might be some better labels I can use. Uh, let's bring it in here. And then I think potentially we could, oops. Yeah, let's group this off for now. Um, Cause there will be realistically, there's like, like a more detailed directory section. So for this card, trying to think like, what's the, the minimum that we need to like bring people in. So it's like introduction to Nathan and his work some examples of some of those projects and then you know a, a click through because the point of this is to entice people down in further into the site um i think maybe some social links here could be good but we might leave that for the directory uh thoughts on that will be also welcome so yeah i'm gonna group this we have a, we have a question on over in the chat yeah um do you always design with grids visible it's a really good question no, not always. I could tend to turn them on and off. Like for now, I'm kind of leaving it so I can get a sense of what, especially when I'm creating shapes here, because um, it does help guide. So even like there's there's also ways that like you can move this to center it. You can grab them and move them up here. But I do find it useful even just to get a sense of proportions. So like when I was setting this background shape, for example, the grid was super useful for this stuff. Not always, but you can see here like it's lining this text is lining up with near the edge of this gutter. Um, so yeah, I do I do love a good grid, not gonna lie, um, but I don't need them on the whole time. Um, do you use any keyboard shortcuts to, to show them on and off? Yeah, that's exactly what I just did now. I was like, I'm gonna forget to mention the keyboard shortcuts. You know when you like do them, they're like muscle memory. So I'm like watching them now. I'm like, this is like shift, command, and like comma. Shift, command, comma. Becomes like muscle memory, right? Yeah. So that's that. And then for guides, it's like command colon, on and off. Uh, and then if you have the guides on and you want to move them, so I have them locked. So it's like shift command colon, and you can move these guys, but I don't move them, so I'm going to lock them again. Yeah, so yeah, keyboard shortcuts are like a really good time. I really like keyboard shortcuts. Um, I need to yeah. learn the one if there's a preview <laughs> shortcut. Cause I feel like yeah, it's awesome to see the grid off, you know, that shows like almost like a preview of your design, but yeah, I need to look into that. If there's a preview shortcut or if anyone in the chat knows preview shortcut for XD. I, mean, I hover you know, there's like this exactly where it's like, it will, sometimes it'll tell you the shortcut here if you hover, but that didn't. Right. So maybe not. It looks so awesome so far. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> I feel like we're we're gonna be lucky if we get through this landing page today, honestly. <laughs> um, we got so, it. You know, we we'll get through we we'll get through a couple of modules. Uh, let's see how we do. Okay, next, let's start firing through some of these. So again, we could probably re start reusing some of the elements that we have here now because we're trying to showcase a couple of different 
um, posts, showcase articles, blog things. Um, post that in here again. Nope. Okay, command okay. return enter is the shortcut for preview. Command or return. Command. <gasps> wow. Yes. Thank you, Fergie. <laughs> You saved the day. Oh, we love Fergie. Fergie is like the co-collaborator on this live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's handy. Yeah, so I was looking at this here as well. So if I do, I did I did put the spiky, I put a spiky hover on these discipline category. These are different disciplines. That. So for these as well, I was like, I want this to be attached. So for example, some people are like quite multidisciplinary. So for example, this case UX UI project but maybe this was like a graphic design project so i think it'd be nice if the tag attached itself to each of these um and then i think maybe like at the bottom here maybe there's like a this is where the big call to action is to follow through and actually like look at making this work um so we put that in here uh i might Pull the style that we had up here. That was a secondary. No, again, not a big fan of generic tables, but for the purposes of us getting through knowing that we need a label, putting it in place. Okay, so command enter. Yes, I love wow. learning. That, so that, that shortcut for those who missed it, that is for preview. So the, the screen that yeah. we're viewing right now. So command enter on a, I think it was command enter, right? Command enter. There command enter. So click on your yeah. iPhone, click command enter. If you're on a Mac, that is how you uh, preview shortcut. Thanks, Reggie. Love it. Okay, so like we've got three modules, like, you know, it's not not an amazing pace, but we're getting through some stuff. Um, and as well, like this looks like when I'm looking at this, I'm like, I know I'm going to come back to this afterwards. I'm like, there's a lot going on. It's so busy and, you know, we'll tidy it up. But like oftentimes this is how I do end up working where like it's like all the things and then coming back and being quite strict about what you actually keep. Okay, so next we have a showcase. Um, so I kind of want a big heading here as well. So I'm going to copy one of these. Um, no, maybe not quite as big. Uh, maybe we can attach it here. It looks nice there. Oops. I wanted to go smaller, but that's super big. Okay. Let's just leave a heading in there for now so we have it. And then I think some sort of filtering. So this is kind of our, this style here. Kind of have this, we're using this in a few places. I'm gonna start applying this in there. So we'll just call this subtitle for now. Once we get into kind of the fuller typography system, tomorrow you might figure that's, maybe it's a H4, maybe it's a H3. Um, I'm going to apply this everywhere else I've used it. It'll probably be good too. Okay. That. Some sort of you know, indication of like filters, or maybe it's categories. Um, and then I think we could. Don't want to use that shape. Use this shape again. So then we're kind of talking about just like would have um interviews maybe. So different types of content. But I'll group that for now. Yeah, so what's so, the goal of, of this section? This is showcasing different types of work? Yeah, so this is kind of like, um, 
like a little overview of the different things that we would feature in the showcase section. So the showcase section being articles about specific designers, about specific projects, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, so when I was thinking about this, like I had to filter in here initially in the wires, because like, you know, to jump you through to, to the second page, which is like one area down, where it's like a, a listing page of all the different types of content we have. And then I was like, you know, maybe it makes more sense to call out types of content. Um, so I'm just gonna put in a few labels here to get us going. Um, it's space grotesque. Maybe heavier. Um, materials, case studies, uh, profiles for now. So this is to come back to. I'll have to come back to this again. Um, now, why is my position weird? So you get these like little like half pixel things. To two spacing, which is kind of so. This is kind of mirroring a little bit some of the rules that we established in the in the menu in the main header. From a spacing perspective, so I haven't shown the uh, pixel grid, but it'll be on like you know generally try and stick to something that aligns with eight the eight pixel grid. Um, so you see a lot of the numbers are like multiples of eight. And align these. Then group. How do you determine that pixel grid, or what you'll so, be working with? So, like, kind of as a as a starting point, I tend to work off of like a fairly common pixel grid is eight pixels. So, like a baseline of four or eight, you know, vertically, and then if you're going to space things out, things that fit into multiples of it work. So like I've got like a 32 column gutter on the grid. So again, that fits into eight or like when I'm spacing between the modules, I might kind of have maybe 160 between. So I think it's just a good starting point. I think it varies depending on what you're working on or the brand. Um, but as a, as a first point of starting, like starting with an eight pixel, um, Square grid is generally a good a good one to go for. We had a question from Laura, kind of similar to something like that. If there's any books that you recommend, either on grids or you know things that we've been talking about today, what's your what's your favorite design book? I'm actually very bad at reading design books, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, but there are good, and maybe maybe this is something that we can crowdsource in the in the chat. There, what is there's designing. Grid systems, what is it called? I won't be able to remember. I can see the cover, it's got, it's red and it has like grid things on it. Damn it, I can't remember. Does anybody in the chat know the book that I'm talking about for grids? It's a really good one. Um, yeah, let us know in the chat if you know what that, it's a red book about grids? Red and it's about grids. Uh, well, we can always one. bring you back tomorrow. <laughs> so Laura, stick around. Tomorrow we'll be back here at noon, PSD. This is, so. this is this is the next book I want to read. So if anybody's read this, tell me if this is like a good shout. What what so can you read the title? So it's called Well Designed, How to Use Empathy to Create Products People Love by John Calco. Wow. So this is on my to read list. So hopefully that hopefully color that's a matches good one. I know. that sticker I'm, we have. I'm deeply influenced by all the things that are on my desk. Like I have these neon, <laughs> neon post-its too. You know, super influenced by desk stuff. Love that. Okay. All right, let's get some, let's get some more shapes in here. So I'm gonna throw these in pretty loose for now. Um, let's put the so starting point and then we can do maybe an ellipse. Because we do like the ellipse. Um, so I want a little bit of variety in terms of shape and size here. Um, so like maybe this ellipse is like a like big feature type of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there, oh, now there's a bug. There's a bug in my office. <laughs> hey, bug. I was just saying the, the, it's allergy season now, so my eye is tearing. 
<laughs> it always looks like I'm crying. So always things will pop up. Okay, so here's some here's some nice work. Let's just drop some of this in here. So this is work by Bureau Bonanza Bonanza Bureau. That's Bureau Bureau Bonanza. What a great name. Um, so like a an agency duo, I think Dublin based, as far as I know. And then what else will I put in here? No, oh, that's not what I wanted. Who else? Um, here's some nice. Let's see, let me go out here and see who we got. More artist spotlights. Kieran. Yeah, so something a bit more digital. Kind of see, I want to see as well how stuff works from. Like if you have quite a variety of types of work, different color palettes. Um, you could have like. Grace, like it's some photography stuff, maybe. So Grace and Amaku. And this is Stark Let's make sure we can see it all. Okay. So repositioning. And then we can bring in some of our like standard like this whole thing here. There's a file, I guess. Start bringing it down here. Let's check. Yeah. I think here it won't be as much of a blurb, it'll just be like a like a recaption about what the work is. Um, and actually what I'm going to do here now, that's a good reminder that I should set this up as a stack so that if I change things around, so like if you decide we're being really strict about what you can describe here. Um, this is grouping. This is stack. What? You're getting compliments on how you organize the photos on your Mac. Very tidy. <laughs> I, I did try. I was like, so I, so there's, there's both. So I have all of these, which is like all the folders of all the people who were like, hey, you can use my work. And some of them I didn't even tell me to use their work. I just like love their work already. So I like saved some stuff by them. But then I dumped everything in here. <laughs> so I was like, these are all the lovely things. But yes, I did want to remember who did what. So um just just pause the screenshot this and go like google all these awesome people there you um, go okay amazing irish designers they're all from ireland is that right yeah i think so they should be yeah most of them are um or they were here at one point um some people aren't based here like pete pete bar so pete's another admin from the slack community he moved to australia not so long ago um, and Al, who we're going to be seeing tomorrow, I believe, a little bit of his work. He's in Ireland, but he works at a company in the US. Like I said, Nathan's based in Bali, so people are around the place. Um, but yeah, everybody has some sort of connection to Ireland. Okay, so now I also want to add in some stickers, stickers for these as well to be able to categorize them. So I'm gonna, this is kind of more photography based, I guess it's large art direction I might need to get a bit more specific with the labeling but for now I feel like it'd be nice to indicate what we're dealing with and what else do we have we have we've got UX right there maybe okay sorry Kieran I'm going to change out your picture just for a bit of variety so maybe get a bit of illustration going on so we've got a couple of great illustrators in here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ashwin has some cool work. So Ashwin Chaco. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. I feel like I've seen that before. Oh, this is from an artist. This, this was an Adobe. I think he did this as part of like an Adobe um, residency creative. The community Adobe. fund. Yeah. That's why I was going to say I've seen it. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, the Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund. Um, is offering Adobe commissions so you can apply 
Um, anyone can apply any field, um, any visual field, and you could possibly do a commission for Adobe. So check that out online. That worked out great. We didn't even plan that. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, I was like, I recognize that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to add in a couple of different things here. So we might revisit this in terms of what well, this all says. Okay, I should just check my spellings. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. So we have okay. about 20 ish minutes left. We've done a lot so far. So for those of you just tuning in, uh, we have set up a foundation with visual assets. We've set up um, some, you know, initial thoughts about what this app is or website is going to be. And Aoife has been designing a community platform for designers. So highlighting a lot of Irish designers here, which is just so awesome. Um, so if you are over on YouTube, jump on over to Behance. We have the chat going. We just talked about the creative residency community fund that you can check out and apply to. Um, and if you want to stick around, we have coming up tomorrow, we'll be back here at noon, 12 PM PST. If you want a notification, you can subscribe on Behance right next to where it says Adobe live. And then you'll be able to watch us tomorrow. Yeah. So we're definitely not going to get through two screens today, so that's fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've done we a have, lot so far. We, we it have. looks great. We've got we've got a couple of things in here. Like I'm curious what would happen if I like also introduced like a little, you know, maybe that's the window. Yeah. Like and then so this. These folks are because they're like a duo. I have like their this little thing. Okay, so we need a background image for that. So I'm gonna do duplicate and then fill this guy and then just kind of position. Maybe, and then like that kind of points out as well that maybe we need like a background behind these two just to keep it like readable. Got in the stack. Don't want it in the stack, I want it behind the stack. Back. So it's all about arranging. Yeah. There's so much time doing that, but you know, it is important. It'll be useful later. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to do a little bit of tidy up for tomorrow, but yeah, maybe there's something in also including the directory um, profile piece. Uh, this is like a In combination um, somewhere. Just leave it. Hmm. Let's leave it like that for now and see what we can get through in the last few minutes. So we have some like resource cards here. So again, these could be quite uh, quite simple. Um, with these and we might, we might set it as separate like a, a background um a little bit of distinction here i think as well for like the likes of resources and things um you know, i can feed in we can feed in mm -hmm. okay so now we're moving on to the resources section right yeah exactly um so maybe like the, these categories makes more sense down here, or we do a variation of it. Uh, when I'm looking at this, it's like, this will be like the title of the resource. And it is. And I might take a different approach to call to action here. I'm going to move this 
text link. Um, and I feel like, yeah, some simple codes might be good here to begin with, just to lay them out. Uh, the grid. Go on and see how many we can get realistically. So let's do a little repeat grid and see if this would fit in neatly. Maybe good spacing of that. I love repeat grid. It makes it that easy. <laughs> I know. Like there it is. They're done. Um, four. I might get four cards in. We have a couple new folks to XD on the chat. So what repeat grid does is it creates an infinite, basically grouping of that initial element. And so you can use command R on your keyword or control R, or there's a little handy little button in the right hand corner. If you see that there, the very top, it says repeat grid up here. Yeah. So that could find group that so you can, you can do this with pretty much anything. Like, like I was thinking about this as well for the these profiles, like when we get to skipping ahead to like the actual directory listing, it's like down here, if there's like, if you do that here, like this. There we go, oh. repeat grid, boom. Loads of people and you're like, Wrong. and then you've got your, your listing and you just have to drop in all of these guys. If I just like select all of these, and if you like drop it into the first one, we'll start, if we, maybe I grab too many. Oh, no. Wow. Um, I did actually try and prepare in advance for this. I was like, oh, maybe I can have um yeah, some names. So like this is another handy thing is like if you drop the text file onto the first one, it will like update all the names. And then I have bios. Now these bios aren't bios, these are um Jeffson. <laughs> So one of, the design, <laughs> one of the designers in the group actually, um, Sean uh, Halpin, created this thing called Jeff Ipsum. So it's like Jeff Goldblum quotes, but in a lower Ipsum. So that's why that's why I saved those out from. That's um, amazing. I love pretty, that. That's pretty fun. Um, so yeah, like the spacing here isn't quite right then. So you can, you can grab some space. And then these guys ended up being a bit too didn't I? There. And there's the beauty of her peak grid. You just showed it all. <laughs> it just took like no time at all. Um, yeah, and we can. Um, 80. I feel like 80 is not a bad, like, eighth or magic number. And then, yeah, you can like finesse the. So, like, this is a good example as well where like having it on the grid is useful. So, I'm like looking at this going, okay, line it up. I'm like two columns in from the left. I'm gonna line up two columns from the right. Um, yeah, and there it is. Neat. Amazing. Neat. Well, there, that's kind of that's kind of this guy done a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. That directory. So you skipped ahead a little bit, but that works. Um, now for adding in some like interaction pieces, I might ungroup them but like there we have all the country content in in like a minute or however long that took since I line this for now um maybe yeah so there's our start on our directory listing um and for resources I feel like these are a little bit more subtle but um and I think for these as well like these sticker approach could be useful. We had a question about that repeat grid. So we, you dropped in those names and those descriptions in there. Yeah. What was that? What did that text file look like? Literally. You give us a quick preview I'll, of that. I'll open that up. So that's, I oh know that's the bias. It's just like this. There you go. So it's just listed in order that you want it. Yeah. Essentially. So I, I dropped them in alphabetically uh but it's just like uh, each a, a new line for each new entry and same with the bios like they're just like each paragraph break will be you know interpreted as a new item and then just does it by magic it's just it's some exactly magic way. button 
Yeah. So there you wonderful. go. So if you had that question about how you do that, you just pretty much have that text file list in the order that you want it, whether yeah. it's alphabetical and then there you go. And like that didn't take too long to do. Like as I was like naming the folders of work, I was like copying something in here. So it didn't take too long. And then again, like this point of like having real content, like this is more accurate in terms of what content could go in here. So it would be amazing if I did have all the content that would go in here. But uh, yeah, if you do have it, setting them up as text files, just plain text files can be super handy when you get to the design stage, yeah. especially for the stuff like this, like repeating cards, it's brilliant for them. I know. And it goes infinitely as long as you have. Oh yeah. Like it can like more people, more, <laughs> more designers. So yeah. many. That's awesome. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's, uh, if we could this, we could probably like, no, let's give me head too far. So this is this part of it too. It's like, oh, well, that's going to be used over there. Let's start mocking that page up. Okay, so I'm going to, for the sake of this one being actually a bit more accurately designed, I only want one row in this. So this is more like what this one's going to look like. Um, and then this is our resources so we don't forget about it. And again, for emphasis, I feel like resources is more practical so I'm kind of like conscious that I want to set up some sort of style that is you know showcase flashy versus more practical um so I might reduce the size of this one for now and what kind of categories we have for resources we have um two times we have stuff um, tools maybe uh, books sure it's different yeah books. this would have been a perfect segue for that question about the books okay. <laughs> i should have thought about that in advance you have i have so many books in this room but like most of them are fiction um, <laughs> yeah there's this this line about empathy book I have a book about data viz. There's a book behind me, which is like full of women graphic designers, design hers. It's a beautiful book. I recommend that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the chat what your favorite design related book or anything creative probably would be interesting, interesting in here. Yeah. Yeah, so this thing as well, like, like my main area is like digital UXUI, but I love looking at other disciplines for inspiration. Um, yeah, so we'll crowdsource design, that. Illustration of them. So we have a few different types of resource categories as well, potentially. That could be a way to navigate these guys. Yeah, I'm not sure what way to do with it. Okay, um, and then. Let's just do like a easy button. Let's just do a normal rectangular button for now. <laughs> <laughs> just because we've done every other shape but that. Um, what are we doing now? Grab. Yeah, we'll just type it in. Uh, And then maybe we'll use this subtitle one as well. It's probably something close to maybe it makes a square. Maybe we need a square in our toolkit. All the shapes. Can never have too many. I mean, why did I abandon the square? <laughs> you know? Um, and then we can we can still do something interesting with it. Uh oh, I can one, two, three, two, two. 40 pixels on the edges. So if I, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, they're annoying me with their not ready to do what they're supposed to be doing. Let's put this. Let's do two of them. So we probably need a maybe a more subtle shape for this, maybe I'm feeling as a secondary tag, like I played around with just some like pill shapes my shape explorations over here so maybe we can get a bit more standardized you know, we had it. one book re recommendation so yeah. kyle t webster um had recommended someone else recommended kyle t re webster's recommendation <laughs> which is a book called color and light by james gurney okay, i heard that one that sounds well, that delightful down. Yes, yeah. I love both of those things. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Take this style. Let me flip this. Let's use a caption style and see if that translates here. Um, so this is a book. Let's write it in. I'm going to set that to white. So this is a funny thing actually about color contrast too so like you know this purple color here when you see it like first it's like if you do so i have this as another plugin shout out um this colors inspo thing has contrast checker so if i grab these guys so you can see here that like the white on purple doesn't technically pass but it's much easier to read. So like, this is something I think that I remember like finding out about it and I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. So like the contrast checkers can't really take into account the brightness. So if you have something that's like a really saturated, bright purple or orange or blue, if you're looking at these two, these two tags here, technically this black on purple is mm -hmm. more accessible, it passes the contrast, but the white is actually easier to read. So there is a little bit of um, consideration from a, a visual perspective if you're trying to make sure that stuff is easy to read and is like, like even nice your mouth there, like you can see like the, the black is much harder to read than the white. So yeah, that's that's a hot tip from what contrast was that plugin perspective. Called? So this one, Colors Inspo, so it does a bunch of stuff, color related, so like palettes, generate palettes, generate what it looks like for different color blindness situations. So there's a whole bunch of stuff it does, but for the, the ratio checker, uh, you can grab your bits. So here it's not quite passing for AA or AAA, um, but it's easier to read than trusting. Huh. It does pass. See? Wow. Star face for black, even though it's harder to read sad face for white, even though it's much easier to read. So it's it's usually with things like they're super saturated, super bright. So like there's bright purples, bright blues, oranges. You'd often see with orange as well, where you, if you put black on orange, sometimes it's harder to read if it's like a deep orange. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, so anytime, anytime you have something super bright, like all the colors here, I feel like that will um, apply, right? A lot of them are pretty bright. So you have to be careful. So like, for example, this pink one probably doesn't have the level of brightness. There's there is, a, a, there is a technicality to this, which I'm not going to be able to articulate. Um, so there is some context where it's like, yeah, you stick with what the checker tells you. Um, so for example, here, like it's like, yeah, black, happy days, party time. But with white, it's like, no, don't do it. So yeah, I would take that point because the shade of this color, like the tone of this color, isn't going to be bright enough to counteract the pure black or the pure white. Whereas this purple on screen, because it is so vibrant, will so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just a point for like actually like testing with people and just getting them to tell you you know well just like well which of these can you actually read easier like you know totally yeah, yeah. like through user testing through whatever it is always yeah. getting a second opinion like tools are awesome to get like get you to a certain point um but then testing with people to find out especially if you know you're trying to be build something accessible. So I'm not going to do too much with these for now. Um, as a little card, there might be graphics that could go with it. I'm going to group it for now. Um, 
just as a let me put a square. I do feel like lots of these will have imagery to go with them. Um, just gonna send that back. And then send the background back. There might be some sort of graphic that goes with it. What could I use? Maybe somebody's work. Yeah, it's a book. So let's use this there we go. magazine cover. So that was by Haruk Alau. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names right. Another great Irish creative. Yeah. So we probably will Maybe. have a have a desire for some sort of graphic here, I think. Uh, how are we doing for time? We have a couple minutes left and then we'll do a wrap up. So that's where this repeat grid will come in handy there. There you go. Okay. Look at that. Done. It's totally done. I'll drop up, I'll drop in some more of these. I'll just pick some random. Lovely we'll see the repeat things. grid magic happen again. It's gonna happen again. I'll uh, mix it up a bit. How many did I have? My repeat grid. Uh, that's stuff Five, maybe. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna give it that. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So they don't need to be like repositioned from a crop perspective. But well, can do that on an individual basis. Perfect. There we go. Awesome. awesome. All right. So there we have it. We got through so much today. I'm so excited. Um, so thank you so much, Aoife. I hope everyone on the chat who joined us today had a great time. We will be back tomorrow, 12 p.m. PST. You can always watch us even when we're offline. So we'll be there. Um, so join us tomorrow after Danny Polen's character design live stream, which is happening from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. PST. Danny will be playing with shapes and creating a kaleidoscope background um, for characters. So we'll be on here after that live stream again tomorrow to finish up this um, design community platform with Aoife. So tune in for that and we will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for joining everyone. That was fun. See you tomorrow. Amazing.